Hello friends, how are you all? So let us continue international economics. This is the fourth video of this lesson. Uh, till the previous video, we have studied about the balance of payments. Okay, an important topic. Then we have also studied about, uh, you know, uh, what is the meaning of exchange rate. Especially we have seen two main concepts, which is the nominal exchange rate and real exchange rate. Right. And uh, then uh, we also got introduced to the topics of near and rear. Okay. So this is nominal effective exchange rate and real effective exchange rate. So now we want to discuss as to, uh, you know, we have seen the theoretical foundations of near and rear. In the previous video, I have shown you how, you know, theoretically, like, uh, you know, for a textbook purpose, how near and rear are calculated. Okay. By taking the weighted sum of uh, the different exchange rates uh, of our trading partners how it is done that we have seen uh, in the previous video but it is also important to know how it is calculated in real life by rbi okay so once you get to know this uh, i think it will be easy for you to understand uh, any question or you know any concept related to near and rear but before we do that uh, okay we need to first understand the different types of exchange rate systems that have existed uh, you know in the world globally uh, history of evolution of various international monetary systems okay it is very important to understand because uh, when when we will actually understand how rbi calculates the near and rear we will get introduced to a new concept which is known as sdr okay these are the special drawing rights uh, so this concept uh, will be used when we actually see how RBI calculates near and rear and that is the reason why uh, we want to first study the different types of exchange rate systems. Okay, so in this particular video, we will first see what are the different types of exchange rate systems and then we will get introduced to SDR also maybe in the next video and then we will see how near and rear are calculated by RBI. Okay, so are you guys ready? So let us start. Uh, let me begin with, uh, you know, uh, different types of exchange rate systems. So exchange rate systems, they are also known as exchange rate regimes. Okay, they are also known as regimes. Now the first one is the flexible exchange rate. Okay, the first type of regime is the flexible exchange rate regime. Flexible exchange rate regime is also known as floating exchange rate. Okay, floating meaning they can, you know, they are, they are free floating, meaning, you know, the movement is free. The movement is free. That is why they are also known as flexible. Now, in this particular exchange rate system, the movement in exchange rate is completely market dependent. Okay, it is completely market determined. And there is no intervention from the central bank or RBI. So, RBI, RBI does not intervene in foreign exchange market at all. Okay, it is a completely market determined system. So, basically, it is a completely free market. Free market meaning there is no reserve transaction. So RBI does not actually buy or sell the rupee or dollar in the forex markets. Okay, it does not it does not do any deliberate, you know, buying or selling of rupees or dollar in the uh, foreign exchange market. So basically, it is a completely free market kind of foreign exchange market. So basically, there is a demand curve, there is a supply curve. Okay, here is a quantity of foreign exchange that is dollar. Okay, and here is the exchange rate, which is the rupee per per dollar. So exchange rate is basically how we define it, how many rupees for one dollar. So that is our exchange rate. Okay, and this is the supply. This is the demand for uh, foreign foreign exchange. And we see that this is the market equilibrium point. So this is the equilibrium quantity of dollar in the market. And this is the equilibrium exchange rate. Okay, so uh, this is how it is determined in the flexible system, in the flexible regime. Right. So uh, we will understand what is this actually why RBI sells or buys dollars or rupees. We will understand when we study the fixed exchange rate. So let us come to the next type of uh, exchange rate regime, which is the fixed exchange rates regime. OK, now the name itself suggests that here the exchange rates are fixed. OK, so they are fixed or they are pegged. Pegged meaning they are uh, fixed. Pegged basically meaning fixed only OK, at a particular rate. So, you know, mostly prior to 1970s, we uh, 
you know uh, fixed exchange rate system was there in the in the world okay and we will see why it got changed okay maybe in the next video we will see uh, when we will study the evolution of international monetary system at that time we will see why this fixed exchange rate system was changed okay uh, so basically see this uh, fixed exchange rate and pegged exchange rate are strictly not the same although we use it interchangeably but they are strictly not the same so what is exactly the difference between fixed and pegged also we will see here okay in fixed exchange rates exchange rates are completely fixed and not changed at all okay it is like fixed meaning fixed and balance of payment crisis are not dealt by changing the exchange rate rather it is dealt by taking the imf loans or any other ways okay whenever there is a balance of payment crisis so exchange rates are not devaluated okay exchange rates are not devalued okay not devaluated sorry it is devalued so exchange rates are not devalued to make our exports more competitive no that is not done uh, you know it is dealt with some other way whereas in pegged system it is decided by the monetary authority monetary authority meaning the central bank or our india's is rbi so they will decide where it wants to peg okay that peg is decided by the monetary authority and during a balance of payment crisis monetary authority changes the exchange rate so this is a very slight difference between fixed and pegged but uh, you know but for all practical purposes we uh, we will use the term fixed exchange rate and pegged exchange rate interchangeably okay they are practically they are the same but only in case of balance of payment crisis how the monetary authority behaves that is uh, that that separates these two so i hope you are understanding what i am trying to say here now let us look from the graph okay let us look from the graph uh, how it looks so see here again the graph is same on x axis we have the quantity of dollars on y axis we have the exchange rate rupees per dollar okay so this defines our exchange rate nominal exchange rate now this is the supply curve this is the demand curve this is the usual one now in the free market in the flexible exchange rate market this point will be the equilibrium point right so this will be the equilibrium exchange rate and this will be the equilibrium quantity of dollars that is available in the market okay that is demanded and supplied however because here this is a pegged system this is a fixed system for example the uh, you know this this equilibrium market interest rate was rupees 50 okay so here the exchange rate was rupees 50 per dollar okay so in order to get one dollar you have to pay rupees 50 and this is the equilibrium for example but the rbi pegs the exchange rate at 45 for example okay so rbi says that no we will fix our exchange rate here so rupee will be converted into dollar at this rate at 45 rupees now you look at this at this exchange rate at this rate if you look at this the supply is this much okay this is the supply and this is the demand because we have to look at the point on these two curves so this is a point a point is on the supply curve b point is on the demand curve so at this rate this is that this is the supply and this is the demand so here we see that supply is less than demand and this is a supply of what this is a supply and demand of foreign exchange okay this is a supply and demand of foreign exchange of dollars so we see that there is a excess demand okay this is known as excess demand so there is a excess demand for dollars here because obviously see intuitively also if we think uh, you know <coughs> here the exchange rate is less than the equilibrium that means for less rupees for less amount of rupees you are getting one dollar otherwise in free market you would have got it for 50 rupees but now because of the rbi policy rbi pegged system you are getting one dollar for only 45 so that is why the demand for dollar is more so more people are demanding dollar because the exchange rate is low okay now this extra demand this extra demand in the market this is the excess demand ab okay this excess demand the rbi will meet by supplying dollar so this extra demand rbi has to supply and rbi will supply these dollars in the market from its forex reserves okay in order to keep the exchange rate at 45 so whatever this extra demand is rbi is supplying this this extra dollars in the market but see rbi cannot do it indefinitely rbi as a hamesha to nahi kar sakta continuously supply to karke nahi rakh sakta kyunki rbi ke paas mein bhi limit hoti hai right so rbi also has a limit up to which it can supply so after a point rbi reserves will be exhausted okay it keeps on supplying supplying and after a point the reserves will get exhausted khatam ho jayenge and it will be forced to change the exchange rate in this case it will have to devalue the rupee 
ओके इट विल हैव टू डी वैल्यू द रूपी मीनिंग इट विल हैव टू मूव अप दिस एक्सचेंज रेट बिकॉज सी नाउ दिस दिस इज द एक्स्ट्रा डिमांड सो नाउ द मे बी द आर बी आई विल रिड्यूस दिस डिमांड और यू नो इवन फर्दर इवन फर्दर यू नो द आर बी आई हैज टू रिड्यूस दिस गैप सो बेसिकली इफ यू आर मूविंग अपवर्ड्स मीनिंग रूपी इज गेटिंग डी वैल्यूड रूपी इज गेटिंग डी वैल्यूड राइट सो वेन एवर यू हैव टू पे मोर रूपी फॉर वन डॉलर दैट मीन्स रूपी इज गेटिंग डी वैल्यूड हियर इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर पैक सिस्टम वॉट वी हैव सीन द एज पर द फ्लेक्सीबल सिस्टम एज पर द फ्री मार्केट सिस्टम द एक्सचेंज रेट शुड हैव बीन फिफ्टी रुपीज बट आर बी आई इज पैगिंग इट हियर सो आर बी आई इज ओवर वैल्यूइंग द रूपी ओके ओवर वैल्यूइंग मीनिंग सी मार्केट में रुपीज का और डॉलर का और रुपीज का जब हम वैल्यू देखेंगे तो पचास रुपए का एक डॉलर था ओके पचास रुपए का एक डॉलर था बट आर बी आई बोल रहा है कि नो नो सिर्फ पैंतालीस रुपए में ही एक डॉलर आपको मिल जाएगा सो यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है रुपी का भाव ज्यादा है जितना होना चाहिए उससे रुपी का भाव ज्यादा है सो रुपी इज ओवर वैल्यूड एंड डॉलर इज अंडर वैल्यूड नाउ इन दिस केस इफ द आर बी आई फेल्स टू मीट दिस एक्सेस डिमांड ओके इफ द आर बी आई फेल्स टू मीट मीट दिस एक्सेस डिमांड इट विल हैव टू डी वैल्यू द रूपी मीनिंग ऊपर जाना पड़ेगा सो बेसिकली आर बी आई विल हैव टू डी वैल्यू द रूपी नाउ देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल्ड स्पेक्यूलेटिव अटैक्स सी स्पेक्यूलेटिव अटैक्स मीनिंग वॉट देर आर स्पेक्यूलेटर्स ओके स्पेक्यूलेटर्स मीनिंग पीपल पीपल हु बिलीव दैट आर बी आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू मेंटेन द एक्सचेंज रेट फॉर लॉन्ग सो दे नो दैट आर बी आई के पास में इतना रिजर्व नहीं है बचा हुआ एंड आर बी आई विल विल बी फोर्स टू यू नो आर बी आई विल बी फोर्स टू डिवैल्यू द रूपी सो दे स्टार्ट सेलिंग रूपी एंड बाइंग डॉलर बिकॉज दे नो दैट इन फ्यूचर इन फ्यूचर रूपी विल बी डिवैल्यूड एंड डॉलर विल बी रिवैल्यूड मीनिंग डॉलर का भाव बढ़ेगा और रूपी का भाव घटेगा ओके दे दे बिलीव दैट द रूपी रूपीज वैल्यू विल गेट लेस एंड डॉलर वैल्यू विल इंक्रीज सो वॉट वॉट दे डू दे आर स्पेक्यूलेटर सो दे विल बाय डॉलर एंड दे विल सेल रूपीज राइट इसको बोलेंगे हम लोग शॉर्ट शॉर्ट सेल ऑफ रूपी दे विल शॉर्ट सेल रूपी हमने देखा था शॉर्ट पोजिशन एंड लॉन्ग पोजिशन राइट दे विल लॉन्ग डॉलर एंड दे विल शॉर्ट रूपीज सो बेसिकली दे विल स्टार्ट सेलिंग रूपीज एंड दे विल स्टार्ट बाइंग डॉलर Now what happens once they start buying dollar demand for dollar will increase okay demand for dollar increases now since demand for dollar increases RBI cannot really sustain this pressure because see now in this graph if we come if this demand increases meaning if this curve moves to the right okay now here there is a increase in demand so we see that this gap further increases right this gap has further increased from AB to now AC see this gap has increased so now there is more pressure on rbi because it has to supply more so rbi will be forced to devalue the rupee so in this case rbi will be forced to devalue the rupee and speculators will actually gain okay so speculators ne jahan se shuruaat ki thi they had speculated that the value of dollar will increase and the value of rupee will fall now actually they have started buying dollars and selling rupees they have started attacking the rupee okay they have started attacking our currency isko bolte hai attacking the currency by selling it by short selling it okay and buying the foreign currency and actually what happens because of this pressure because of this attack rbi is actually forced to devalue the rupee because it does not have sufficient foreign forex reserve to sustain that pressure okay sustain that extra demand for dollars and therefore speculators actually gain and this entire procedure is known as speculative attacks okay this entire procedure is known as speculative attacks and this was one of the prime reason for the asian financial crisis of 1997 98 okay this again we will study uh, when we study the global financial crisis and other crisis we will study the asian financial crisis also and this was one of the main reasons behind it so this is a kind of self fulfilling prophecy इसको बोलते हैं सेल्फ फुलफिलिंग प्रोफेसी ओके मीनिंग वॉट सी स्पेक्यूलेटर्स बिगेन विद बिलीविंग दैट यू नो रूपी विल फॉल एंड डॉलर विल इंक्रीज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ देयर एक्शन एक्चुअली दिस हैपन्स सो देयर प्रोफेसी प्रोफेसी मीनिंग देयर भविष्यवाणी प्रोफेसी मीनिंग भविष्यवाणी ओके उन्होंने जो भविष्यवाणी की थी कि रूपी का वैल्यू फॉल होगा डॉलर का इंक्रीज होगा वो एक्चुअली फुलफिल हो गई सो इट इज अ सेल्फ फुलफिलिंग प्रोफेसी बिकॉज ऑफ देयर एक्शन ओके now the third kind of system that we are going to look is the managed floating okay it is known as managed floating see 
it is also called as dirty floating okay dirty floating the it is not a very good name but this is how it is written in the textbook so managed floating is also known as dirty floating now see it is a mixture of flexible and fixed or pe pegged regime okay it is it is a mixture of both now here what happens here rbi says that okay the exchange rate will remain at a particular level but we will allow its fluctuation on day to day basis in a in some band okay so there is a band that is defined कि भाई इतना अपर लिमिट होगा इतना लोअर लिमिट होगा फॉर एग्जांपल दे हैव डिफाइंड दैट ओके रुपी टू डॉलर द वैल्यू विल बी फिफ्टी रुपीज सो दे विल अलाउ अप टू फिफ्टी टू रुपीज अप एंड फोर्टी एट रुपीज डाउन ओके सो दिस मच बैंड मे बी दे विल अलाउ सो दैट इज वाई वॉट दे आर डूइंग दे आर मैनेजिंग दिस एक्सचेंज रेट विद इन अ पर्टिकुलर बैंड सो दे आर अलाउंग इट टू फ्लोट अलाउंग इट टू बी फ्लेक्सीबल विद इन अ बैंड दैट इज वाई इट इज नोन एज मैनेज फ्लोटिंग इट इज अ मॉडरेटेड फ्लोटिंग सो देर इज अ मॉडरेशन इन फ्लक्चुएशन ऑफ एक्सचेंज रेट and it is done by fixing a band in which exchange rate can fluctuate okay this i have explained to you now here reserves are increased or decreased depending upon the market forces every day so for example if uh, you know if if the market forces are such that you know there is extra demand for dollars so rbi will have to supply the extra dollar so it's so its foreign exchange will reduce in that case if the market forces are such that there is a you know less demand for dollars so rbi will have to supply less dollars or in fact it will add dollars to its foreign reserves in that case the foreign reserves may increase okay so basically with time if you see so for example here you on x axis you plot the time say for example you know one month two month three month four month five month six months something like that so you know with time you will see that rbi has decided okay this will be our peg so for example this is a 50 rupees per dollar this is the exchange rate and now this is the band this is the lower band this is the upper band and within this band the exchange rates are fluctuating like this okay so this is how it looks in the managed floating now let us look at the next one so next one is also known as the crawling peg okay this is the crawling peg see crawl karna meaning as a dheere dheere upar jana okay dheere dheere chadna so that is known as crawling so crawling it is also like managed floating only but the bonds or peg levels of currency exchange rate fluctuations are changed more frequently see here in peg in the managed floating we see that you know for a long time you know this peg is decided and this bands are fixed for a long time this may be 2 years 5 years 1 year okay at least for 1 year 2 year this is decided but in crawling peg okay this bands and these are these are changed very frequently maybe you know every week or you know every 15 days something like that and this is and when this will be done this will be done during the high volatility times for example you know there is very excessive pressure very much excessive pressure on the currency there is high balance of payment crisis okay the current and the reserve bank of india or the monetary authority is not able to manage the exchange rate you know and there is volatility is very high the international trades are very high and this usually happens during the you know financial crisis times okay during recessions during wars etc so these are the high volatility times and during this time what happens the reserve bank of india the monetary authority of any country it has to change the pegs very often it has to be very active in the market it has to decide the pegging of exchange rate very frequently so you know this is how it looks like somehow so here if you plot the time on x axis and here is the exchange rate so basically you know for this say for first 7 days this is 7 day this is 14 day this is may this is maybe say 20th day something like this so every you know every 7 day it is changing its peg so it is you know it is devaluing its currency every 7 days something like this and the bands are also redefined so this is see this looks like a crawling thing okay as as a crawl hota hai exchange rate like this so this is how it looks i hope you have understood the difference between crawling peg and managed floating this crawling peg is not there in the ncert textbooks okay this is not there but just for the sake of your information and knowledge i am i am telling you this in this lesson so these are the four exchange rate regimes that uh, you know that are important that we should know and in the next uh, video we will continue with this only exchange rate regimes we will understand how the evolution of international monetary system has happened over the years okay and what was the role of america and dollars in all that so we will study that then we will get introduced to the concept of sdr and then finally we will see how near and rear are calculated in our country by rbi okay so keep watching videos thank you